Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life, as opposed to the angel of light, which is the prince of darkness. And no, I'm not talking about Dracula. Did you know that Dracula, Count Vlad, Dracul, he was a prince from modern-day Romania in the Transylvania province. Did you know he was a Christian? Yeah. The media turns him into a blood-drinking vampire. Why? Because he partook of the communion the bread, the flesh of Christ, and the wine, his blood. So they turn him into a vampire. Yeah. And he was fighting against uh, those peace-loving uh, Muslims who invaded his country. Yeah. So, yeah, he used to impale his... If he caught them, they, they would uh, impale them kind of a morale boost for the enemy when they're marching down the road and they see all these people impaled, you know. Yeah. So this is going to be the end of the Horns series. And by the way, uh, if you check my community page, you can find the links where I'm going to post things that I dare not post on you-know-who tube yeah and uh, I don't know if you like drinking rum bowl put those two words together um, I'm putting all the really stuff that I would dare not put here on that channel some really interesting stuff so uh, yeah, things that get me keeps getting me uh, suspended. So I'm tired of uh, their little antics. So it's pretty sad you got to talk in code. Yeah. So with that in mind, now this will probably be the end of the study. I'm planning on making this the end of the Horn series. I know it's been a while. I've gotten two suspensions since I've started this uh, horn series. So it's been kind of hard to figure, you know. So, But sometimes horns is a something on an animal, and other times it is a figure of speech, of uh, meaning power and or government or rulership. You know, the Vikings used to wear horns on their heads, on their uh, helmets, right? Yeah. All right, let's take a look real quick. Psalms 112 point, uh, and verse 9. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn, his power, his horn shall be exalted with honor. Psalms 132, 17. There will I make the horn of David to bud. Now, a horn is from an animal, and a bud is, you know, like a plant in the spring, you know, when the flowers get buds, then they turn into flowers. So, obviously, this is a figure of speech, because... David, King David didn't have a horn on his head unless he was wearing a Viking helmet, right? I don't think he was, but well, you never know. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. And what does a lamp do? It gives light. Jesus is the light of the world. Mine anointed. 
God anointed kings. God anointed the high priest. God anointed uh, prophets. And he anoints his people in the New Testament with the Holy Spirit. You know, and the Bible says, uh, John the Baptist, I think it was John the Baptist says that uh, he will baptize them with, uh, oh boy, I have to think about that. All right, John the Baptist and John, uh, Matthew 3.11. John says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. See, baptism with water was just basically ceremonially washing the flesh, the dirt off the flesh. It was symbolic. Unto repentance, turning away from the wickedness in our lives. However, he continues, But he that cometh after me, Christ, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I imagine uh, Satan's going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Satan's going to be baptized with fire in the lake of fire, not the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, let's go take a look at horns. Psalms 148.14 He also exalted the horn of his people. Who are his people? Who are God's people? Israel. Old Testament and New Testament. I'm sorry. Most, most churches will absolutely deny that, but I don't. You don't believe me? Pause right here. Go to Galatians 3 and 29 and look it up. And read it until it makes sense. We don't become the spiritual seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham doesn't say spiritual seed in there anyway. The only thing spiritual is these churches teaching the spiritual satanic doctrines. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. His saints are those that are going to be in Christ, people. Even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Jeremiah 48, 25. Now, Moab was, let's just say Ammon and Moab were people that the Lord didn't like. The Bible doesn't give you their genealogy, but I suspect that they married into the Canaanites because the Lord don't like them. But, those people that are universalists will tell you, oh, well, that don't matter. Christ came and now he just loves everybody and wants everybody to be saved. Uh, is that why the Lord says he's going to destroy Esau? Edom? There won't be any remaining of the house of Esau? Well, that's the Old Testament chaplain, Bob. Yeah, well, the Bible says, that the Lord says, uh, I am the Lord, I change not. But they want to believe he changes. So, believe what you want to believe. Either God has enemies, or everybody's a potential saint. Take your pick. And the, what you pick might make a difference in your worldview. Jeremiah 48, 25. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, saith the Lord. They were the enemies of Israel. It's kind of hard to fight an enemy when your arm is broken. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets that they call, well, they call it minor prophet. 
They call it a minor prophet because of the size, not because of the importance of the book. Minor prophets are those books written, uh, placed in, a, in the King James Bible just before the New Testament. These minor prophets are often one page in size. So, All right, we're going to go to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet unto Shigayanoth. I hope I pronounced that right. Verse 2. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive the work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. See, the prophet is asking, you know, the Lord's mad at his people, but in his anger, I hope he remembers to have mercy. And people, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for God's mercy, we'd all be destroyed, especially me. Boy, I did so much evil stuff when I was a idiot, a young idiot. Surprised the Lord didn't kill me out of hand. But I guess he had other plans, so. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Who's the Holy One? I, I would guess that's Christ in his pre-human form. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. Do you remember when Christ went up to the mountain and was transfigured before, I don't remember which apostles it was, but it said his clothing, his, his raiment was like shining like the sun. All right, that's in uh, Mark 9, chapter 2. Uh, Mark 9, verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And then in Matthew 17, 2. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment, clothing, was white as the light. So there you go. Um, let's go back to Habakkuk, verse 4. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns, horns coming out of his hand. Now, obviously, he doesn't have horns coming out of his hand. So, this is a figure of speech. In his hand is power. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, disease, and burning coals went forth at his feet. So, this is judgment. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. There's a verse in Revelation that talks about the mountains. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Where the islands fled and the Mountains are laid low or something along those lines. Let me see if I find that real quick. Boy, I had to really search for this one. Revelation chapter 16. And verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Such as was not since men 
were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. So this is going to be the most devastating earthquake in the history of the world. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. That's how bad it was. The nations fall down. The, the cities collapse. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And people, if you think it's Rome, you're wrong. The Lord says the prophets, Babylon killed the prophets. Then the, Jesus says Jerusalem killed the prophets. I got a Bible study on that if you're interested. All right, so there's going to be an earthquake, right? Verse 20. And every island fled away. People, if you live in Hawaii, when this earthquake hits, you're going to be swimming. I, ho I hope you got your water wings. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. The earthquake's going to be so bad, the mountains are going to be leveled. Wow. All right, so. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, Habakkuk. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right. Um, all right, so we're done with that. All right. Uh, now in Zechariah chapter 1, you could read about Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-H. -H. I get Zephaniah and Zechariah uh, mixed up all the time. But in Zechariah chapter 1, uh, 18, 19, 21, you can read about the four horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Uh, 18, then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. 19, and I said unto the angel which, that talked, unto, uh, talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Uh, let's see if I can remember. Now, Israel was taken captive by the Assyrians. And then you had the Chaldeans and the Babylonians that took Judah. And then you had the Persians that uh, also. So these... Those might have been your four horns. I'm not 100% sure, but the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Assyrians are at least three of those four horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And then in Zechariah 121, uh, let's see, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at uh, Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 1. I guess we'll read maybe we'll read the whole chapter and then we're going to close this Bible study out. And you might want to check my other um channels, you know, non-tube channels, because anything that might get me suspended, I might just totally ignore um, this platform, because I'm getting tired of getting suspended. And uh, if I do get another one, it's going to be a solid three months. It will be. And if I get too close together, too more close together, they'll just shut the channel down. And I'm going to try to keep the channel up as long as I can. So 
I made a promise to the Lord, as long as my tube channel's up, I'll keep making videos. But when tube deletes my channel, uh, that's the Lord's way of telling me to do something else. So, all right. Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth an order of declaration of the things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, a, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now Aaron was the brother of Moses, and they were of the tribe of Levi. And guess what? Mary was related to Elizabeth. They were cousins. So I guess Mary was a Levite also. Well, but Joseph was of the lineage of Judah, the tribe of the kings. So in Christ, there was the merging, I guess you could say, of the priesthood with the kingship. Yeah, think about it. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both and they both were now well stricken in years. They're old. Sort of like me, I guess. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. See, the priests would take turns uh, doing their, their uh, duties. And I'm not sure how long it was. Maybe it was a you know, a month, you know, from new moon to new moon. I don't know. I'm guessing. Don't, don't take, don't quote me on that. That nine, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, his job, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And that's what you can call holy smoke, right? And I'm not trying to be funny, but yeah. That's what it is. It's holy consecrated smoke. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now I think if I saw an angel, uh, maybe with wings and, you know, the whole deal, uh, I'd be like, um, I hope this guy isn't here to kill me. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. I think I'd be troubled and scared too. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Here it is, an angel from the Lord telling John, what to name his son? Well, guess what? Gabriel did the same thing to Mary and told her to name him Jesus. But your Christ deniers will tell you that, uh, no, his real name was Yeshua HaMashiach. That's because they're antichrists. I don't trust anybody that denies what the Bible says. 
and thou shalt call his name John. Matter of fact, Joseph had a dream too where he was told to call him Jesus. That's two witnesses. But the Yeshua crowd, they don't believe the Bible. They don't. They really don't. Well, you know, the, the New Testament was was mistranslated from from the Hebrew when the those Greeks got a hold of it and and they they mistranslated it and turned it into anti you know what ism. Yeah. So the New Testament's all wrong and we gotta go back to the Hebrew roots and the sacred names, otherwise God doesn't hear our prayers. Yeah, that's the kind of nonsense that uh, they teach. And then they want you to get circumcised and keep the Sabbath. But they'll never talk about um, what the Bible says to do with uh, those that like to, uh, men that like to play with men from the, um, uh, pause right here, people. I'm, I'm going to talk something adult themed if you got your kids listening. Uh, okay. You better pause. Men that like to play with men uh, using the rear entrance, if you catch my drift, the Bible's very specific on what to do with those that do those kind of things. But your Torah keepers never want to talk about that. No, they want you to do circumcision and, and keep the Sabbath. Nobody cares if somebody keeps the Sabbath. But... Uh, when the Bible tells you to do something to those that use the rear entrance, well, oh, they never, they don't want to keep that Torah. No, 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 no. No, something that would make a real difference, you know. So, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Not all, many. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. This guy was filled with the Spirit of God from the day he was born. May, I think before. But, hey, what do I know? I'm just some clown that's read the Bible a couple times, right? Jesus said that there of all those born of women, there was not a greater than John the prophet than John the Baptist. Wow. How's that for a testimony? But he also said that he that is least in the kingdom of God, or he that's in the heaven, I'm not sure, I'm paraphrasing, was greater than John. So. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. That's the Greek rendering of Elijah. See, some people will tell you that John the Baptist was Elijah. He's not, people. He went before Christ in the spirit and power of Elijah or Elias, as the Greek rendering is, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John went before to prepare the world for Christ. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife, well stricken in years. Hey, uh, angel, uh, don't you know, we're a couple of old people and we can't have children anymore. We're too old. Don't you know that? Don't you know human biology? I have a feeling that's kind of along the lines of the way he phrased that question. I mean, there's a, there's a difference between saying, how shall this be? And saying, how's this going to be? Come on. I'm old. I can't have kids anymore. I'm not Rod Stewart hanging out with these 
20 year olds 20 something year olds having kids Nineteen, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. See, John, I um, mean, Zacharias said, how am I going to know this? I'm an old guy and my wife too. Don't you know anything, angel? Don't you know this? Don't you get it? But Zacharias didn't believe his words. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So, Zacharias is going to be, his tongue is going to be bound and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. Man, what's taking this guy so long? He's uh, just burning incense. What's taking so long? And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own home. See, they had shifts for the temple the priests you know they they worked in shifts i guess so and after those days his wife elizabeth conceived ah and hid herself five months saying thus hath the lord dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among men see back in them days did not have children was considered a curse of God. But if you lead, read the newspapers, the world's overpopulated, and having a child, having children is a burden. It's a curse. Have an abortion. Have more than one. Have many as you want. And that's what the world tells you. Now, listen to this. So, to take away my reproach among men, Verse 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. See, Joseph was of the house of David. He was a Judah. And the virgin's name was Mary and the angel Gabriel and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that are highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be man what kind of greetings is this and salutation, that's where uh, the same root word where we get the word uh, in the military, salute. You know, when you, that's how a, an enlisted man, like a private, would greet an officer. You'd salute him. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now this is Gabriel from the Lord. Verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua? No. And shalt call his name Jesus. You see, the Yeshua crowd deny your Greek New Testament. They are telling you it's wrong. And you got to go sit at the feet of a rabbi to truly understand the Hebrew mindset of the New Testament, Yeshua. Tell them where to go. H-E double hockey sticks. Yes. Because if they're listening to rabbis, well, 
let him go where the rabbi goes after he dies. Yeah. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, shalt call his name Jesus. But they don't believe the angel Gabriel sent to the Lord. No, uh-uh. Verse 32. Gabriel speaking here. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign, he shall rule, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? seeing I know not a man. See, Mary's not saying, ah, oh, you idiot, don't you know? I haven't been with a man. I can't get pregnant. I can't have a son. He's not, she's, she's not saying that. She's asking him a legitimate question. How shall this come to pass, being that I haven't been with a man? How am I going to have a son? Can you explain this to me, please? I mean, I believe you, but can you explain? Well, that's the Bob translation 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God and behold thy cousin Mary and Elizabeth were cousins Levites, and behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. John the Baptist was six months older than Christ. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hmm. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. See, the, the Mary's saying, you know, let it be according to the, everything you say. May it come to pass. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zecharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the greetings, the babe, John the Baptist, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Which is why I think uh, John the Baptist had the Holy Spirit even before he was born. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded to mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, uh, that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath he sent empty away. He hath holpen, helped, his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed, his children, forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. 
Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord has showed great mercy unto her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise this child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. What did Gabriel said to call him? John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately. See, just like the angel said, you're going to be dumb for a season till the, all this comes to pass. And his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard him laid them up in their hearts saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. You get a really, really old woman that gets pregnant, and John's a priest, and, you know, these people are watching this child grow up. And then he grows up and ends up being John the Baptist. You know, those that believe the Lord are paying attention. What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Christ, read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. God visited his people and he redeemed his people from the curse of sin and death. He was the Lamb of God, just like John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The Bible is a seamless book, people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Listen to verse 69 carefully. And hath raised up an horn of salvation. Hmm. Oh, wait. That's what this Bible study has been all about. The series. Yeah. The horn. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation. Christ is the horn of salvation. For us in the house of his servant David. Wow. That we should be saved from our enemies. But John 3.16 says that God loves everybody. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You know, when you hear uni people, universalists, saying that, you know, God loves everybody and God wants to save everybody realize you're listening to one of two things either a baby Christian that should keep their mouth shut and their ears open or a deceiver take your pick I mean sometimes the deceivers deceive baby Christians and they just parrot what other people say Polly want a cracker ah. Polly want a cracker ah. yeah parroting stupid stuff and he hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us didn't Christ say that they hated him without a cause? And that if they hated him, that they would hate us? 
Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us and that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. The whole world? No. Till the day of his showing unto Israel. People, I hope you learned something and I hope you've appreciated this Bible study. You know... Sometimes this is a thankless job. And you got to realize something. I don't beg for money. I'm a volunteer. You know, which means nobody pays me to do this. Okay? You know, volunteer. And it's often been said that, you know, you, you get what you pay for in this life. Well, the Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. And I absolutely believe this. I was given a free gift and I'm trying to give a little tiny something back. So please pray for me to be strong people because how much time do we have? I don't know. I honestly think we are good until probably the fall of this year. And this is 2023. And uh, who knows what... The evil ones usually pull the rug out from under us in the late fall or early winter. Usually around November, they pull their little plug on the drain. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if things done in the past or any indication of the future, keep an eye on the fall. So... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Remember the new channels, people. You might go on a odyssey to see a rumble. Yeah. All right. Take care.